In my latest video, which is an iPad review, I said this. You don't have to keep up with the newest, shiniest and most modern. Money doesn't grow on trees, we all earn it through hard work, so I don't want you to waste it. I actually want to discuss this more, because on YouTube, everyone tries to get the latest and fastest tech, even if they don't really need it. Phones have been getting quite similar to each other for years, and laptops haven't changed much over the years either. So, what's the point of changing and renewing them every year? To go even further, what's the purpose of always getting the latest version? Yes, by getting the latest model, you are getting a device that will last the longest, and you get to float having the latest tech. But do we really need that? In this video, I am going to show a few of my devices and share my thoughts. It won't be a very long video, but I want to express my frustration with the consumption frenzy and the constant pursuit of having the latest and greatest. First of all, let's talk about phones. I used an iPhone 15, but before that, I had an iPhone XR. Yes, I used the same phone for about 5 years, and since I enjoy using the latest technology, I updated my phone purely out of personal preference. I could have continued using it as it was with a new battery since the camera was still good and the performance was sufficient. After all, we use our phones to send messages on WhatsApp, watch movies on plane and listen to music without even looking at the screen. I understand if you want the latest model for better photo quality but I don't think any of us could tell the difference between an iPhone 13 and a 15 Pro Max in a blind test. Even if we could tell, we compress the photos to upload them to Instagram. Another point is the 120 hours issue. Yes, experienced users who look for it can notice the difference, but most users don't even realize that their Pro phones are running at 120 hours. When comparing 60 hours and 120 hours side by side, many can't even see the difference. It doesn't make sense to spend an extra $200 for a features like 3 times camera that you are unlikely to use. With that extra money, you could buy an iPad instead. Apple aware of this and the nonsense of only bringing new features such as Apple Intelligence to Pro models. They add a feature to only 15 Pro models and not to any other phones, which means they are not adding this feature to more than 18% of the phones they sell, pushing users to get the new model. Don't fall for these games. You probably don't need the latest model. I'm not going to hold back just because a few sponsors haven't come through. Even an iPhone 13 would meet all of your needs perfectly. So don't be fooled by Apple's tricks. Second, let's talk about laptops. I have a 2020 and one MacBook Air that I have been using it about 3 years. You can check out my detailed usage video via the card right appears above here I think. When I look at the new M2, M3 and the upcoming M4 models, I wonder if 99% of people really need these models. I mean yes, if you are a video editor and every second counts, you might need it. I'm not arguing that. But if you are an average consumer, you probably don't need the latest and shiniest model. Walmart was selling this MacBook for $600 and it covers your needs more than you think. I'm going through each aspect to convince you. Well, screen has a 2.5K resolution and excellent display, supporting 100% DCI-P3. You will never hear an M1 MacBook user complain about how bad they their screen is. The downsides are that it's LCD which means the blacks in the top and the bottom bars during movies aren't perfectly black and it can only reach up to 400 nits. After that battery. I'll keep this short, it's excellent. Throwing this laptop's battery is almost a punishment. You can work on office files for hours or being much shows. And performance, the M1 offers more than enough performance for everyday users. Yes, it might not be the sufficient if you are running a Windows emulator to play GTA 5. But remember, this laptop is aimed at everyday usage and media consumption. So if you are planning to get a MacBook and don't need it for personal tests. By the way, I edit all my videos on this M1 MacBook. You can simply buy the cheapest MacBook, the M1 MacBook Air. The differences you'd feel between M2 and M3 MacBooks won't be worth the price difference. Third, let's talk about tablets, which I think the easiest part. You can also check out my review video via the card above here. Tablets are the easiest part because their use cases are very limited and I don't think anyone needs to upgrade to the next tier. Today, if you get an M4 iPad, you can do everything with it that you can do with this 9th generation iPad. Yes, you won't be able to edit videos on this one, but if you are not a professional and you probably aren't, this won't matter at all. Beyond that, tablets are used for media consumption and drawing. There is 
literally nothing else you do on them. With everyone having phones in their pockets, nobody takes videos or photos with a tablet. And no one prefers to use a touchscreen keyboard for word processing when they can comfortably do it on a computer. Of course you can do it if you had to, but a tablet shouldn't be your first choice. Even if you have one, you can easily manage with a tablet from 2021. Fourth and finally, let's talk about the Apple Watch, which you can also check out through the card above. Yeah. I've been using the Apple Watch for one and a half years and I can simply say it's a waste of money. Instead of suggesting you buy a lower model as I did with the previous topics, I want to say outright, don't buy it. Seriously, don't. You can get much cheaper smartwatches that offer the same functionality. I will stay within the ecosystem, but I don't want to be brand royal. This device is basically a money trap. Seeing message notifications on your wrist and monitoring your heart rate at the gym are nice features, but know that you can do these things much more cheaply with an Android watch. So spend your money accordingly. Even the basic Apple watches are simply money traps. So don't make the mistake of getting the Ultra. That watch is made for people who exercise in extreme conditions. Seeing an Apple Watch Ultra on someone who spends all day in an office under air conditioning makes me feel nothing but pity for them. So these are my last thoughts for this video. I hope I have expressed myself clearly. If you liked the video and my ideas, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, you can write the reason in the comments. Peace.